The following program is made possible by the faithful friends and supporters of Higher Aim. Welcome. I am so glad you have joined us today because today we are going to deal with handling temptation. And I know that you have probably already this day had to walk through some of that. Well, Jesus gives us a great example of how to do it. So stay tuned. You will be glad you did. Follow along with Dr. Dodd by going to higheraim.org to get free downloadable sermon notes for today's message. Go to Luke chapter 4, or you may want to follow along with me because we've got the scripture verses up on the screen. There in Luke chapter 4, we find Jesus at the end of a 40-day fast dealing directly with the evil one in the midst of temptation. And he provides for us a wonderful example of principles that we can do proactively to handle temptation. Why don't you follow along with me? Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Uh, notice that last phrase. Another time, another time, and another time. And you and I will have to deal with this issue over and over and over again. Now, you need to know that the first Adam met the evil one in a garden and failed. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, met the evil one in a wilderness and conquered him. And you and I are given the hope that we too can manage temptation. Now, I need to stop and tell you something. Being tempted is not sin. Just because you're tempted doesn't mean that you've sinned. Sin happens when you take that temptation, temptation and bite the hook and swallow it, and then you act out the actions of that behavior. And you and I need to realize that that is part of life. And as long as you live in this skin suit, you are going to wrestle in this area with your flesh. Let me give you six principles that you and I can do proactively to prepare ourselves to deal with temptation. Because before you leave probably today, you're going to have to deal with temptation. And if not inside this building, in the parking lot, and if not in the parking lot, maybe at the restaurant, and if not in the restaurant, in your home. If not in your home, your business are all of the above. So get ready. Here's six things that you can do. Number one, like Jesus, you and I need to refuel your spirit. Now, now watch this. There in the very first verse that we read in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, Jesus, comma, full of the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Jesus, who was very God of very God and very man of very man, was tempted 
But the Bible says he was full of the Holy Spirit. And if you, watch this, if you have personally invited Christ to be the Lord of your life, you have turned from your sin and placed your life in his hands, and you've become a follower of Jesus, you are full of the Holy Spirit as well. And God wants us to refuel our spirit so that we flow with the tug of the spirit rather than the tug of the flesh. For either you will be full of the spirit or you'll be full of the flesh. And you've got to decide where you're going to put your focus. So refuel your spirit. Jesus did. And if he did, you and I need to. Number two, I would tell you, refuse the seduction. Refuse the seduction. The Bible tells us that Jesus just said no. All the offers from the evil one, he said no to go with the flesh for power, influence, prestige, money. No. You and I must do the same thing. You and I need to learn how to say no to the flesh. Josh Billings once said that half the trouble of this life can be traced to saying no, or rather saying yes too quick and not no soon enough. And many of us, we just go with the flow of what we feel rather than understanding the war that's going on inside of these skin suits. Now, allow me to read to you a lengthy passage that sets things up They're out of Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And as Paul is flowing with this, I I hope you catch the gist of what he is saying. Watch this. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Stop for a second. During Paul's day, there were people saying, well, where there is sin, God's grace really flows. So if we want to experience a lot of God's grace, start sinning a whole lot more. That's what was going on, and people were buying into that like they buy into it today. But Paul says, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self, that's that sin nature, was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, here's the deal. When you turn from sin and place your faith in Christ, something happened spiritually inside of you. Before you gave your life to Christ, there was a master chain that was tugging you and controlling you. And you went with the flow of your flesh. But when you turned from sin and invited Christ to rule your life, guess what? He broke the power of sin. In fact, that's why the Bible says that you have died to self. You've, your, your old life is no longer. And now you, you have a brand new life. And God wants you to live in the power and the strength of this brand new life. You go, well, then why am I having such a difficult time 
with sin in my life, if Jesus set me free and broke the link, why am I still fighting sin? Thanks, thank you for asking that question. Let me answer it for you right now. It's that you're listening to the, the tinkling of the chain. It's still shaking in, in your flesh, and you are making a decision to hook on to either side. And the moment you say yes to sin, it's got you again. But you're the one holding the link right now. Jesus has already set it, set it loose in your life. And you don't have to give in to your flesh. And you've got to decide, will you allow the Spirit of God to rule your life or will you allow your flesh to control your life? You and I, the Bible tells us that we are to refuse the seduction based upon the power that God has already given us on the inside. We are positionally dead to the old life. That's why, as a brand new believer, your appetites are no longer the same. You don't want what you used to want. But when you engage with your flesh and you live to please what you want rather than what God wants, you're hooking onto the old chain again. Now, remember this. The people around you who have never given their life to Christ and they sin, that should not surprise you. They're acting just like their nature. But you who know Christ, He sets you free. You're not to be in bondage to anyone or anything other than Jesus Christ, and he will give you the right want to. See, the problem is many of us struggle with sin in our life because we've made friends with it. We've justified it. And you know in your knower when God has shown you something that you should not be involved in, some relationship that you should not be engaged with, some habit that, that is more important to you than the flow of the Spirit of God, and you've said yes to that rather than saying yes to Christ. And the Bible teaches us that you and I can refuse the seduction of that. And that's critical. In fact, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is a, a great passage of Scripture. It says this, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted... He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Now, many of us, we're often looking for the door into sin rather than the escape passage. And everything that you would ever go through, every temptation of your flesh, of your spirit in your life, whether you're in your relationships or your business or in your home, let me just tell you something. Anything the evil one throws out or your flesh begins to entice you with, there is an exit door. Look for the exit and go there. It's interesting, in our building, there are green exit lights. Some places they're red, but ours are green, and they highlight every door to get out. Look for the green, because that describes growth and strength and power, and you have the ability to look for the exit door. The Scripture gives us that glimpse. Let me give you a third principle. Recite the Scriptures. Recite the Scriptures. Didn't you notice that Jesus did not use logic or philosophy to answer the evil one when he tempted him? You know what he used? The Bible. In fact, he quoted Deuteronomy 8, 3, concerning Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, did Jesus have the Torah with him, carrying around the Torah in the, in the wilderness? No. He memorized the Scripture. So, recite Scripture. Let me give you a fourth thing. Rest in the Savior. Rest in the Savior. Hebrews 2, 18 is a great verse. I want to read it to you. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Get this. There's not one temptation that you have ever experienced that Jesus himself has not experienced. He's walked where you've walked. He's wrestled with what you've had to wrestle with. He's had to say no to the very same things 
that you have had to say no to. He can identify with you. And you need to rest in the Savior and realize that as you lean back on him, he will empower you to stand strong and be able to say no. Look, look at James 4, 7. We're going to use this verse a couple of times. The first part of it says, submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves then to God. That's what I mean when I say rest in the Savior. You give in to the Lord, not your flesh. Give in to Jesus, not what your heart wants. You know, the Bible tells us the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things who can know it. Let me tell you something. Your heart has the ability to lie to you. I talk to people all the time who believe certain things about themselves that the Bible does not teach. There are a lot of people who believe they are this when God says you're that. And your heart will lie to you about yourself and about your situation. And that's why you need to submit to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to think like you think. I, I want to think about me and my situation and my circumstances like you're thinking about me and my situation and circumstance. Submitting to the, to the Lord is a very powerful thing. And when you begin to lean into him, you will have the power to say no to temptation. Again, do you want to be strong in your flesh or do you want to be strong in your spirit? Do you want to just live a sensual life and you just do what you want to do and your life will become addicted to sin regardless of what it is? And you'll become a trophy collector of scars in your own life because you're going with the flow? Or do you want to become a man, a woman, who desires to be in tune with the Spirit of God, who can hear God speak sense when he is tugging on your heart and rightly divide the word of truth and your life to come alive when he speaks? Then you've got to learn to rest in the Savior as you submit to the Lord. That's very, very important. Let me give you a fifth principle. Resist Satan. Resist Satan. That's what the Scripture says in James 4, 7. Bring it up again. Let, let, let's look at this passage. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let me just tell you something. Satan's a coward. He's a liar. He's a chicken. And all you have to do is resist. You don't have to throw a punch. You just have to stand. You just have to decide, I'm not going to be blown over by this. I am not going to be pushed. I am just going to stand. And guess what? The moment you decide to stand and take control of your life, take control of your circumstances, take control of how you're thinking, the Bible tells us Satan will flee. He will run. He'll run back but he will run out of that circumstance and situation in your life. You need to know that. Stop saying yes to your flesh. Say no to the evil one. Resist Satan. And by the way, let me say it once again. Just because you're able to have victory in one circumstance and situation, don't think that you've won forever. Remember, Satan came back at a more opportune time for Christ. He'll do the same thing for you. He will. And you're going to have to learn to handle this on an everyday basis, and it's part of your spiritual life. And God wants you to be strong enough to where you're resisting temptation, resisting the evil one. And you know why that's important? Because God doesn't want you to mess your life up more than it's already been messed up. Let's face it, we're all broken. Wouldn't you agree with that? There's not one of us in this place who has any right to be using how we're thinking, where we've been that needs to be applauded by other people. If people really knew who we really are on the inside, they would be shaking their head. And you know that, and I know that. But let me just tell you something. The great thing about it is, is God knows all about you and loves you anyway. He has given you life. And by the way, I don't want to take you to the next place yet, 
before I tell you this. Some of you have beaten yourself up because you don't know enough Scripture. Well, jump into the Word. Start studying the Bible. You've you got to start someplace. But even if you don't know a Scripture verse, when you get tempted, just call on the name of Jesus. Just call his name out. Let me tell you something. That's enough. You know what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11? That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every time you mention his name, there's power in the name of Jesus. Have you noticed that nobody uses profanity with the name of any other false deity? They will use God's name, but they won't use anybody else's. You know why? Because Satan loves that. Anything to give any irreverent focus on the name of Jesus. Let me tell you why. His name is powerful, powerful, powerful. You are more powerful as a child of God than you know because Christ lives inside of you. You can have victory. No wonder John wrote in 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You are awesome. Do you understand that? Jesus lives inside of you who know Christ, and he has empowered you to stand, and he wants you to stand and not fall back. He wants you to stand upright and understand who you are in him and understand that you are victorious. Do you understand that? You and I need to grab hold of that. I think one of the greatest tragedies of believers today is they don't know who they are in Christ, and many of them just get in the flow of their emotions and their flesh, and it, it feels good. They feel like, well, maybe, God, you're in that. And they go with the flow of the flesh. God wants you to be in the flow of the Spirit of God so that you can stand and stand strong. Let me give you one last word, and I'll close. Here it is. Rejoice in the situation. Rejoice in the situation. When you get tempted, you need to just thank the Lord that he's going to take you all the way through. Watch this, James 1, verses 2 through 4. It says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In other words, God wants you to grow up he wants you to be a full, standing, strong man of God, woman of God. And often it is through the trials and the tribulations and, yeah, even the temptations that God is teaching you how strong you are and how awesomely strong he is even to empower you to say no to your flesh. God wants you. He wants me to be a man, a woman who stands strong. Learn that from the Word of God. Apply it to your life. You're going to need it today, but also you can learn a lot from nature. John Burroughs, the, the naturalist, found out as he studied hawks that when they are attacked, you know what they do? They don't fight back. They make ever-widening circles in the sky and fly higher and higher and higher and higher to the place that they outsoar their attackers. And that's exactly what God wants you, He wants me to do. He wants us to spread our wings and catch the updraft of the power of His Spirit because we've learned to fly. In just a moment, Dr. Dodd will return with a closing thought. Follow along with Dr. Dodd as he teaches the Managing Your Emoji Sermon Series. We have free sermon notes available now to download at higheraim.org. Learn more about each week's message. Even take your own notes about what speaks to you. Just go to higheraim.org to get your free downloadable sermon notes today for Managing Your Emojis. Are you looking to go deeper in your study of God's Word in the new year? 
If so, we've got the perfect resource for you. Here at Higher Aim, we've put together a free Bible reading plan that will walk you through reading the entire Bible in one year. This resource is completely free and easy to order. Just go to our website at higheraim.org or call us at 1-800-491-4400. We would also like to thank you for supporting Higher Aim financially this past year. Your gifts have allowed us to reach people all over the country with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are not currently a financial partner of Higher Aim, but have been considering making a donation, I would encourage you to do so today. A gift of any amount can make an amazing impact as we continue to spread the gospel through our ministry. If you're willing to partner with Higher Aim, you can make your donation by either going to our website at higheraim.org or by calling us at 1-800-491-4400. Thank you in advance for your generosity and faithfulness to this ministry. We are so excited to see what God has in store for 2020. I pray that whatever you are going through, that you'd realize that God really loves you. And even as the scripture says, there's not any temptation that any of us could ever walk through that Jesus hasn't already gone through that himself. And because he was victorious, he wants to empower his children to be victorious. And I pray that you will just lean back on him today and call out his name and ask him to take total charge of your life. He wants you to succeed in this area. In fact, he wants you to succeed in all the areas of your life, to be strong spiritually and to be able to face the evil one head on and win. I want to invite you, if you need someone to pray with you right now, whether you have ever given your life to Christ or not, call us. We want to help you continue down this path of walking with Jesus. Would you? Call us. There's someone who is standing by right now to pray with you about any situation you're going through, to show you how to give your life to Christ, to encourage you. So call us. The number's on the screen, and you can connect. Do that right now, would you? Also, I want to invite you to uh, sign up for our newsletter. We have a teaching newsletter that comes out once a month, and you can do that by either talking to one of the folks that uh, is standing by right now, or you can go to our website and sign up for the Bible teaching letter. Do that, would you? We wanna stay connected with you. Well, until next time, keep your heart and mind focused on Christ. God bless you. See you next time. Thank you for joining us on Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. For more information, free resources, and information about the upcoming trip to Israel, please visit us at higheraim.org. The preceding program was brought to you by the faithful supporters of Higher Aim.